So we'll go with, we'll just go to the order right here first. I'll describe cross product and then we'll look at lines of planes after that. So cross product, the definition is kind of ugly. So we'll go with the um, determinant definition of a cross product and what it geometrically corresponds to. So when we do cross products, it's a pro you it's a multiplication of two vectors to get a third vector. And it's a special type. You have your two vectors. And we'll talk a little bit more, more about this after uh, we go into geometry. But the geometry of the cross product, you have two vectors. And in, it's only a three-dimensional property. So these two vectors have to be in three-dimensional space. And the cross product is a third vector that is perpendicular to the other two. And it follows a right-hand rule. So you always have vector one is the first finger, vector two is the second finger, and then the thumb is the, pro the cross product. So like wherever your vectors are pointing, um, your thumb goes the uh, cross product or the perpendicular direction. And if your vectors start out being parallel, they could either be both pointing the same direction like, you know, they're scalar multiples, mm -hmm. or they could be pointing the opposite direction, which is kind of hard to turn mm -hmm. your fingers opposite, but they could be still a multiple, but the multiple would be negative then. In either case, you know, how many vectors are perpendicular to two parallel vectors? The answer is a lot. This vector, this vector, like, you could have this entire... Oh. Uh, so the cross product gives you the zero vector if they are parallel. Okay. So if we have... Cross product. So it'll be V. Uh, I don't. I'm not going to use subscripts because we only have three vectors at the most. We're going to have two vectors cross equals another vector. So I'll just go U, V, and W. So U cross V equals W. U, V, and W are all three dimensional. So they're all inside R3. I'm not going to go with subscripts here. Drawing out a right hand, first finger, second finger, and there's the ones you don't need for a cross product, and then your thumb. So we go U, V, W like that. Uh, if I draw it like a stylized version. You got right angle. Uh, how can I squeeze this right angle? I'll just draw a really big right angle on this guy. It's kind of ugly, but and W is coming off of it. Here. Yeah, so that's that's one way to think about it. Yeah, so if U and V are in the paper, W is coming out. But the idea is they're all uh, U and V don't need to be. There does not need. This could be any angle between U and V. That does not need to be a right angle. Uh, now, when we're talking about angles, if that angle is either zero or pi, or zero or one eighty, then they're parallel. So you'd be screwed up if that angle is either zero or um, half, you know, sure. half a rotation. All right, so that's the the geometric description. Okay. So how do you define cross product? We have to be in R three. So I know U is going to be. We'll go A one, B one, C one. V will be A two, B two, C two. So we'll take this as the definition. It's going to be the determinant. You put I, J, K up here, and then this row will be U. This is one of the few times that you use vectors in rows. Uh, that'll be U, and that'll be V. So this is I, J, K, and then U is A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, C2. So what is I, J, K? Have you seen IJK notation? Yeah, we did that a little bit for a couple of them. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's just placeholders. This is the x coefficient, or the the prop. Usually, you want to think of i as one zero zero, j as zero one zero. Oh, okay. And k as zero zero one. Now I say usually because you don't want to think about vectors being right here. Uh, these are just letters for now but they, are, they will represent these three uh, vectors right here. Okay. So how do we do cross product? We're gonna go row expansion and we're taking a determinant here. So it always goes plus minus plus. That's the alternating signs. 
And we're not going to write the whole alternating sign matrix because we're just going to do a row one expansion for these determinants. You could expand across any row, but we're always, for a cross product, we're always going to go row one expansion. So this is I times the submatrix. And a submatrix is, the submatrix of this matrix is, it's a smaller matrix that is, uh, you get from removing a row and a column. Mm -hmm. So it drops each dimension by one. So the submatrix for I, you cross out column one. And I like to always circle the IJK row so that you're never going to, the submatrices will never use any IJKs in them. They'll be outside. Okay. So it's I times B1, C1, B2, C2. And when we do this process, what is it that we're looking for? Or what is it that this gives us? It gives us a third vector that's perpendicular to both. And is that the span? No. Uh, so if you think of uh, the span of two vectors, which is what we did with that magic carpet hoverboard mm -hmm. problem, that is every linear combination of the vectors that you're referring to. So we had two vectors in that problem. If, if we're writing them on paper with X's and Y's and we're saying Z is out of the paper, we could re redo this problem with in three dimensions and just say that you know the upwards dimension is the Z dimension. And so I could go through here. Uh, do you want me to write with your pencil on here so you can erase it? We, we could sort of force it into three dimensions by just kind of throwing a zero down there and, and then extending these vectors. And then say, yes, there is a height, but it's always going to be zero. Okay. Uh, now your hoverboard and your magic carpet will never be able to get you off of the ground. And so the span is anywhere that you can go with those vectors? Yeah. Okay. So it's any linear combination. Anything you can make from multiples of one plus multiples of the other. Okay. And so if we throw this into three dimensions, we can just say, well, the, these couldn't go up. So you get 0z, 0z. And then, of course, you couldn't get off the ground. So you, you'd, you wouldn't be... It, there, this would have no solution if this wasn't a 0 right here. Yeah, correct. Um, and all, we couldn't have a negative value. You couldn't go drill into the ground. Not with the, and if this is all you could do, you couldn't go underground. Now, if you had a shovel, or, you know, so like some other... That would basically be another vector, another way to move. Okay. If there's a third vector, uh, that would be a different story. So what a cross product would be of A and B, I had to put them in three dimensions to say cross to think about cross products. The cross product of A and B would be a vector that points either straight up or straight down. Okay. You would be intentionally leaving the span of those two vectors. Okay. Does that make, make mm -hmm. sense? So it's a vector you couldn't get from a linear combination of the other two. Because okay. a linear combination is the plane that uh, is determined that these two vectors span. So I can go anywhere here, anywhere here, and because I can make combinations, I can go anywhere across the entire, this entire plane. Okay. But what I can't do is get off the ground and go up or down. But if I cross these two vectors, what I'll get is a third vector that either points straight up or straight down. Oh, I see. Okay. How do I know it points straight up or straight down and not at like some angle like this? Yeah. Uh, because if it pointed, I'll just shade in so we can see like precisely where these first two vectors are. Uh, yes, this vector, if we look at this one here, I could pr hold this carefully and make it a right angle with this first vector, right? That could be a 90 degree angle. Mm -hmm. Is that going to be a 90 degree angle with the second vector? It's a little tricky to see. But it's going to be a smaller, just looking at it right here. That'll be smaller than 90 degrees right there. Okay. Um, I don't really have anything else. Like, like a toothpick would be great right now. Um, this won't show up on video so well. Make it easier to see like this. Now, you know, I could carefully lay one out that's 90 degrees with the first vector, mm -hmm. but now you can probably see maybe I'll even make it a little more extreme so it's more obvious so I'm trying I'm doing my best to make the first angle 90 degrees to the first vector yeah 
the second the second angle is definitely not 90 now. Yeah. It looks like it's even less than 45. Yeah. Uh, you have a three dimensional view and the camera only gets two dimensional. So um, now if I work really hard to get perpendicular to the first vector, let's say right there, you can see that the second angle. Now it's a little weird because this angle between this vector and this vector is actually kind of on a slant. Mm -hmm. If you drew the angle, I'd have to be on this plane that's a little tilted like that. But you can definitely tell it's bigger than 90 degrees. There's exactly one. Going upwards, there's one direction I can go that's 90 degrees from both, which is the straight up. And that's what the cr cross product gives us. That's, that's what the cross product gives you. Okay. Now, there's no sort of guarantee on the length yeah. of that. Uh, there are some uh, properties of the magnitudes of the two vectors in the cross product that you could relate together, but you just know that it won't be zero unless they were parallel. Uh, it could also be the arrow, the direction going straight down. So mm -hmm. I can't push this through the paper, but it could be the one pointing downwards, and you would get that if you switch the order of A and B. So you don't really necessarily know if it's going to go point up or down unless you know where the vectors are. You can go vector one, vector two, cross products and go that way. Okay. So if I went one, two, I could go for sure vector, th the cross product would go up. So if I went A cross B, I would be going up. It maybe it has magnitude, it won't have magnitude one most likely, but Maybe as many do like four or five or whatever it is, it'll you know it may be a little longer than the other two. Okay. Uh, and also, if I switch it around, what you don't want to do is what's called flicking people off. So if you want to switch A and B, you have to take this has to be first vector, second vector. So if I go like this, uh, what you need to do is switch your. Mm -hmm. uh, thing. You can't flick people. You can't reverse your fingers, mm -hmm. and then I'd be pointing downwards if mm -hmm. I swapped. So you can drop that back in. So we're going to go sub matrix off of J, and actually it's a good time to have a second pen. I'm going to cover up the J row right now. So this is the IK sub matrix, so it's A1, C1, A2, C2. And so when we're doing the cross product, we can cover it up with the pens, because I remember that. I one. strongly recommend you have two pens, yeah, okay. or a pen and a pencil, so two different writing. Because he showed it out um, algebraically where you have... X1 times Y1 minus... Well, I'll, I'll, that'll be the next step down here. Okay. But that's hard to remember but for me. But this works for this. Yes. Okay, absolutely. that's how I remembered it. Yeah. And I didn't realize that was what we were doing here. This is usually not given as a definition of the cross product, but it's equivalent to the definition. Okay. Um, so logically speaking, you could use that as a definition. Okay. And then we do the same thing with K. Uh, we go there, because it goes plus minus plus, I'll make that super bold. Mm -hmm. It's a minus J. So this I is positive minus J. The K is positive. We don't usually write a plus in front, but we're just doing it. Uh, so we want to block off K columns. We've got A1, B1, A2, B2. Mm -hmm. And now how do we go two by two cross product uh, determinants? Just real fast review is AD minus BC. Okay. And you get that. Mm -hmm. When you go down to the right, it's positive. Up to the right, it's negative. Okay. So this is I multiplied by B1C2 minus C1B2 minus J times A1C2. It's probably a little tricky to see upside down. No, it's fine. Minus C1A2 plus K times A1B2 minus B1A2. Like that. So that will be your cross product of those two. Okay. And this is a three dimensional vector. Here's the x. It's a little tricky. That's like the negative y coordinate. Mm -hmm. And that's the z coordinate. Okay. So this is what a cross product, uh, how to compute a cross product. So now we'll go into the geometry of uh, lines first. And a line in a vector notation. Pretty easy to draw a line. Now a line goes both ways forever. Like that, it's a one-dimensional linear object. So the way that we are going to think about lines in vector notation, we're gonna have some point, I'll call it P naught for some point, as an initial point. It could be any point on the line, it doesn't have to be a, a particular point or the closest one to zero or any, it could be any point on the line. And then what else does it take to define this line? So you need to know one point and you know a direction. 
So what direction, you can pick any direction you want. I'll just go this way for no particular reason. You don't have to pick a vector of a certain length. The only bad length to choose would be zero again. And we're staying on that line or we're going a different direction? From this vector needs to be uh, parallel with the way the line goes. Okay, so it's like it's laying on top of it. Yeah. Okay. So this will be V. I'll just call that vector V. So our line... I'll write it as a set. I'll write it in set notation first. I'll just write what's in my head right now and then we'll, we'll turn it to set notation. So the way I think of uh, as a function of t, L of t equals uh, vt plus p naught for any uh, t in R. So think of t as like a scalar. We use the letter t in this instance, we think about time. So at time zero, you're going to have zero v's. So where are you at L zero, L of zero? You're right here. You're at the, think of this as a starting point. Okay. When t increases, you're going to go more this direction. And the point is given to us on those types of problems? Uh, it depends on the problem. Okay. Uh, probably, unless you're going to intersect two planes, in which case you'd have to find a point that's common to both planes. And so to intersect planes, you would most likely take the two equations you get of a plane and figure out what point or points do they have in common, which is solving a linear system of two linear equations. And I, I will tell you why a linear equation corresponds to a plane uh, after we go through lines and then and talk about definitions of how you describe planes. So this is a parameterized line. If you really want to go to the slope intercept concept, you can think of P naught as the, it's not really the Y intercept, but you can think of it as the, the initial point you're going to draw out. So if, if I was in two dimensions back in the day when we had linear stuff on planes, you'd probably go, oh, here's the uh, Y intercept. I'm going to call it P naught. And then my slope would tell me how much to go over, how much to go down. So my slope really would be equivalent to uh, the direction to go from that point. Now I say this is not the best way to think of it because P naught is a point. When you write it in Y equals MX plus B form, P, this Y intercept we usually write as a, as a number. So it's really, think of it as a point. So at some point, some point on the line, and then you're going to get information about how much uh, over and down to go. Or equivalently, you could just think, ah, if I knew what, how this vector looked, I could easily sketch out the rest of the line, just extend that vector both ways. Now, it's a little bit weird because this is not a linear combination. If you want to use scary math language, it's affine linear, which means you can think of it as a linear, a line that's not going through zero. Things get screwed up when you go th don't go through zero because if you think of linear combinations, you can always have the trivial linear combination, which is always zero. So this line doesn't go through the origin, so it's not... It's not a linear combination. Okay. This part would be sort of the linear combination part. This part is where we get that word affine that uh, there's no scalar next to it. So it, it acts a bit different than like the standard linear combination. So it's, it's think of it like an offset. So it's like, oh, here's a line. So if all I gave you is a direction, think of this pen as an arrow. How many lines can you make with it? You can make a lot. You can make any line that's going this direction. Yeah. And I can pick an initial point, which is where, let's just say it's where the tip of the pen is. So here's a line, you know, it goes this way. But I can, like, start it up here, and then I have a, a different line. But they're all parallel. You know, I start it down here. So these are all parallel lines. But when you fix some point, that's when you define the entire line. So they have a direction and they have some initial point. Okay. So this is a parameterized line right here. So if we have two directions, 
is we're going to go right two vectors u and v like this and they're emanating from a point still I'm going to use p naught so obviously I'm not going to form a line here because we've got two different directions and they're not parallel so if we look at or everywhere I can go from u and v this is going to be higher dimension how many dimensions will this object have? It's going to have two. Pretend for a minute this point is the origin. And then all I'm talking about is the span. So if this is the origin, any combination of u and v is just a span. Which, is a, which will be a plane passing through the origin. That's another way to think of a span geometrically. If this is not the origin, it's not really a span because it's not going through the origin, uh, but it's still, so we have some plane uh, and get flashcards. Ew, I got some. I wish I got it right here. I do think they're really so big at that distance. Yeah. It's, not, it's not practical. So if, if this plane contains the origin, uh, it would be, and it's supposed to go forever, mm -hmm. Uh, in either this or this direction. If it goes through the origin, it is a subspace, or, a, or any point on here would be a linear combination. Now things get messed up when I don't have the origin inside of it. So let's say we're you know, up here, we just you know, went up or increased our z-coordinate. It's not a linear, points on here won't be a linear combination uh, of So just think about the origin first. It is a nice span linear combination. And then just think of shifting it, just like graphing transformations. Okay. So I can get anywhere down here on the plane that goes through the origin. And then there's some offset that offsets me up to here. And so does that fill all of the depth between that? Or that's here? No, it's just there. a two-dimensional object. Okay. So we're in three-dimensional space now. Okay. Uh, you're only going to deal with planes, I'm pretty sure, in three-dimensional space. Uh, same thing with lines. Occasionally, they, you may see a line in two-dimensional space. Um, the good news is lines are always going to look. Lines are always going to look just like this right here, parameterized line. No matter what dimension you're in, uh, you're only. I think you're only going to see planes, at least with this geometric description, in three dimensions. Uh, the equi a linear equation. Generally, equations knock you down one dimension from whatever space they're in. So, you know, y equals mx plus b is a one equation in two dimensions. The solution is a one-dimensional object. Uh, even something, I hate to use nonlinear for a second, but just the easiest nonlinear I can think of uh, that's not something trivial is like a circle or a parabola, something like that. What do the solutions to this look like? In two dimensions, they are a one-dimensional circle still a one-dimensional object mm -hmm. now it's not linear because we squared stuff so it's not gonna be straight uh, you can do something uh, pretty similar y equals x squared it's an equation it's not linear and the solution is going to be a parabola it's a one-dimensional object living in two-dimensional space when we go to linear these objects uh, either if you're in two dimensions with a one equation you're going to go from two dimensions to one dimension and it's going to be a line in three dimensions, you go from an uh, equation will knock you down one dimension down to two dimensions, which will be a plane, which is why planes look like a general linear ax plus by plus cz, either plus d equals zero or all that adds That's up to be d. I think d is sort of like your offset. So it's a linear, I mean, this, this looks just like linear combination. It's linear, nothing squared. Uh, it's not exactly a um, subspace because we threw a constant in here so that that constant is the thing that screwed it all up from being like a span or a subspace okay. so if that was zero you'd be going through the origin and you have a subspace okay you could talk about um, like the regular linear stuff but there's that offset so wherever your subspace is it's also offset a bit so there's a line in, in vector form right here now if you're in three-dimensional space, your L of t 
has like three components in x, y, z. They're all functions of t. So you could write it of t, of t, of t, like this. I'm writing it in vector form. Now our vector v is going to have some direction. We'll just go a, b, c right here for that. So it's our vector times a scalar t plus an initial vector, which will have, we'll go a naught, b naught, c naught. That's any point on the line. So if you look, there's really three equations here. There's the x equation, and you can just go x, x of t is a times t plus a0, y of t is b times t plus b0, and z of t is c times t plus c0. So there's sort of three like standard linear equations high, like sort of inside here. If you go back to the two-dimensional before you knew about the square word vectors. Um, so there's, there's really three equations hiding in here. Mm -hmm. So what about planes? So a plane you can travel two directions on. You could write out a plane in set notation. So in set notation back to lines, it would be any any u in R3 such that u equals vt plus p0. It's a little, it's almost trivial to write it out like that. Oh, it's any in R3, any uh, you know, point in R3, maybe I'll use p. Doesn't matter what letter I use here, but P usually makes your brain think of points. So any point in R3 such that this point can be written like this for some T, some real number T. So it's basically just anything, it's a collection of everything here for all T values. That's all the uh, line is in set notation. So in set notation, you can write it like that. Now it's not quite all linear combinations. It's all linear combinations with an offset. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So like go anywhere you want on this direction and then once once you think about how far you're going, then like shift it that much up or over or okay. where, however your line's gonna, whatever your P naught is. Okay. And this works in any dimension, not okay. just th th three dimensions. So extending that idea of taking a combination, it's a little stupid to talk about a combination of one vector. And so this is like when you had your, your two lines earlier that you can move it this way or you can move it this way. Um, and so that covers everything there. Now we can come up here and do the same thing. Is that what you mean? Well, we were talking about going to, we we're really talking about a plane. We're creating a plane here. Mm -hmm. So this happens to cover the entire two-dimensional plane when we can go any amount this way or that way. And the offset brings it if, well, if, if I describe it in two dimensions, this covers the entire two-dimensional space, this linear combination. So because it covers everything, there, if you offset it any amount in two dimensions, now you can't say up or down if you're talking in two dimensions. There's no, there is no up or down in two dimensions. Okay. So in two dimensions, I could offset it and then say, oh, it's the plane over here, but the plane over here is the entire plane itself. So if you're... Linear object is the same dimension as the space it lives in. It's already equal to the entire space. Yeah. Okay. It occupies all of that space. Yeah. So it really only makes sense to talk about objects with equations that are not the entire space itself, that have a lower dimension. Okay. So if we think about this in three dimensions now, where you have an up or down, uh, the offset would be how much up you go. So you have like your initial plane, your combination that covers everything on the ground, and your offset is how uh, high you start, your Does altitude. That everything between that? No. Because it's, okay. it's a linear object, it's a two dimensional object, it's not three dimensional. Uh -huh. So uh, it's just the plane, okay. not, not what you sort of had to move through, but only really in your imagination to get there. Okay. It's not like 
if like if you're let's think about maybe a, a boat on the ocean uh, or some creature in the ocean that cannot go underwater i can't think of a creature like that off the top of my head but maybe something that just floats on the top maybe like the jellyfish probably go underwater i don't know something that just floats on the top it doesn't know about it can't go underneath the water nor can it go into the air it lives like right here mm -hmm. So it can go two directions, mm -hmm. but it can't, uh, its world is really two dimensional, even though it's like in a three dimensional space. It just, it sort of picked an arbitrary altitude, whatever the sea level is at the moment. The moon moving around will change the sea level a tiny bit, mm -hmm. but it views the world as two dimensional. Sort of how we view the world we live in as at least f relatively flat. Like we look at a map and it's, you know, a plane. Yeah. Do we live on a plane? Most people say no. Like it has a curvature. But when we look at a map, you know, our maps don't have a curve to them because it appears so flat that it, you know, well, it's sense. not. Uh, so we always think of moving in two directions. Yeah. Like make left, make a right. We don't say make an up, make a down or something yeah. like that. No, that makes sense. Even though at some point you may have to go up a ladder, which is literally, you can't just say make a left. You would literally say go up the ladder or something like that. Uh, generally, directions don't include that. Um, so we go up another. So now we have two vectors, two directions we can travel in, and we have some offset. We can go as much in this direction as we want and as much in this direction as we want. And if our, if our offset was zero... We, we would be talking about a plane going through the origin. And then this offset is sort of, you take whatever, wherever that plane is, it doesn't have to be parallel with the ground at all. It could you know, be at any angle, but it's gonna have some initial you know, offset wherever it is. And that two dimensional object, that plane, is what we're about to describe with math notation. And now I have to also bring in the word dot product as well. Um, This is the way I, I think about planes. There's um, other ways to write them out too, but this is the way I'm going to describe them. So u dot v. So if u dot v equals zero, then u is perpendicular to v. I shouldn't use u and v. Well. So any two vectors, if their dot product is zero, they're perpendicular. Uh, and do you remember dot product? You like multiply their corresponding entries together and add that up. Three entries. Yeah. So u is going to be a 